We have uh, realized for many years that uh, pelvic flow disorders don't affect one pelvic flow compartment in isolation. So patients with uh, rectal problems or rectal prolapse or constipation or fecal incontinence will frequently suffer from parallel disorders of the bladder, whether or not that's emptying problems or leakage and uh, prolapse of the vagina and the uterus. At Massachusetts General Hospital, we have been providing multidisciplinary care as a part of our pelvic floor disorder center for more than a decade. But uh, the care in uh, the US and in the world is a little bit more disjointed with the patient frequently getting uh, assessed by one particular subspecialty without receiving parallel assessments and treatment by all the other experts. We began a movement and the movement involved a call to action to all the various societies that take care of patients with pelvic floor disorders by specialty. The urogynecological societies, the urological societies, the colorectal societies, the physiotherapist societies, the gastroenterologists, calling them to team up and collaborate on the national level and on the international level to develop a common language as to how we assess patients with pelvic floor disorders, how we communicate with each other when trying to transmit information back and forth between clinics, and uh, how we write papers that could then be compared to each other in different analysis or for um, uh, randomized controlled trials. And so the first thing we realized is that we needed a common language because sometimes the terminology is different from center to center and specialty to specialty and that's how the IMPACT initiative was born. IMPACT is an acronym that stands for Initial Measurement of Pelvic Floor uh, Complaints and uh, it was the first initiative of the newly minted Pelvic Floor Disorders Consortium which is a organization that combines together efforts from all of these um, disjointed professional societies across the nation. Um, IMPACT started by trying to develop a language around how we characterize the symptoms of patients with pelvic floor disorders. And so our first movement was to organize a consensus meeting around what kind of questions each clinician in each clinic should be asking patients to try and characterize their symptoms of fecal incontinence, urinary incontinence, sexual dysfunction, whether they are a man or a woman, and finally constipation, which can have multiple kinds. This work took about a year, during which time we created six work groups for each of these set of symptoms. These work groups, um, performed an extensive literature search determining which of the validated instruments out there uh, characterized these symptoms the best way. We made sure that these symptoms uh, and these instruments were short enough to use in the clinical setting but powerful enough to be discriminatory so that we, they can also be used as a baseline measure in research. We reviewed this incredible amount of work that was done by these various experts that participated in the work groups and finally reached a consensus agreement on the basic tools that all of us should use regardless of what our training is, regardless of what our specialty is, to assess patients with pelvic floor disorders so that no symptoms are missed, so that the measurement of the symptoms is similar across the board, and so that we can now speak the same language when characterizing our patients and their complaints. The IMPACT tool was followed by a second consensus meeting which we held in 2019 where we have started to standardize the language around radiological imaging of pelvic floor disorders. We use the similar format of creating work groups based on expertise and uh, prior involvement with research on a topic and have now created an IMPACT MRI impact ultrasound and impact fluoroscopy tool which provides clinicians and uh, researchers with a common language that characterizing findings on pathology. We now have a measure that can give all of us the same yardstick to describe symptoms. We also now have a measure regardless of what radiological imaging you use to use the same yardstick to measure um, radiological findings. 
If we use these yardsticks consistently in our papers, in our communication with each other, we can finally push forward the care of this disadvantaged group of patients that has been ignored for so long.